Hello everyone, my name is Eleftheria and I'm from Crab Nebula and today I have the pleasure to have with me Sebastian. Hi Sebastian, how are you? Hi Elif. Yeah, I'm pretty fine, thank you. And you? I'm doing well, thank you very much. Tell us a little bit about your background and introduce yourself. Yeah, so I'm Sebastian Holstein from uh, Germany and I'm working on the software called Quase, which is uh, of course Tori based and that's why we're talking today. And um, yeah, I'm in, in the day time, uh, I, I'm a full-time software developer, so I'm building Quase uh, as a side hustle, let's say, and um, yeah, enjoying that for several months now. And uh, I recently published the, the Quase software for everyone in a public um, release. So it's uh, um, available now for everyone to, to test for 14 days for free. And um, yeah, Quase is basically a software for managing NATS clusters, which we cover, I think, later on, what's, what's the, the whole topic is about, let's say. Yeah, exactly. That was a beautiful introduction, actually. But before going into that, uh, can you share a little bit about how did you first connect it with the Terry community and what made you use Terry? Yeah, so I'm I'm coming from a background uh, from um, the days where we had uh, the uh, slower uh, desktop applications uh, built with Electron. So that's my uh, background. So I had some experience building uh, that kind of applications. But um, before starting with Grace, I noticed that that isn't the way to go in, 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 in this year with, with our technologies we have right now. And uh, Tori seemed very appealing um, uh, beside, uh, for, for performance reasons and uh, APIs in general. So I checked uh, Tori out and mm -hmm. uh, noticed that it's a good fit for my use case I wanted to cover. A lot of people mentioned the same thing that they found Tyree, they found the best parts of it, and then they decided to switch from Electron to Tyree, or they just started using Tyree. All right, I think that now it's a good time to move to Case. If you can share a little bit about that journey and, of course, showcase it to its best features or why people should use it. Yeah, of course. So I would share my screen to uh, quickly introduce what uh, Quase is and how it's connected with NAT, uh, as I mentioned. So I will quickly share my screen for that. I have a little uh, introduction uh, for, for NATS. So what is NAT basically? So um, as I said, Quase is a desktop application for managing, managing NATS clusters. So um, NATS is a, a project, an open source project uh, which is basically a, a really powerful messaging system. So um, in a typical um, uh, application nowadays, you always have some kind of messaging in, evolved in, in your application development. And um, that is a really powerful messaging system. So it's, it's an open source, as I said, it's written in Go. So it's really small. It's a single binary. You can run it locally very easily compared to Kafka, for example, which is a competitor of NATS. And um, it's also a CNCF project. Um, so um, it has um, a, a powerful company behind it that is um, that develops NATS. And um, yeah, it's also highly scalable. So um, you can have uh, really big clusters deployed um, in NATS applications um, where you can easily scale to multiple millions of messages. Um, that is no problem. We also have um, like um, over 40 client language implementations. So for, for, for every uh, common programming language, you will find a, um, a client to use for writing those applications. And um, what's also really, really cool is that WebSocket support and MQTT support is baked in into NETS. That means that you are able to connect to NETS clusters uh, directly via the browser if you want to do that and uh, write uh, some powerful WebSocket applications. Um, to get an overview, what uh, is really inside of NETS? So we have core NETS, which is um, PubSub, the, the common pub, uh, published subscribe patterns you will um, know from other messaging systems. And uh, we also have uh, request requ request reply um, patterns um, that is also uh, totally supported with uh, Cornets. 
And um, if you want to persist those messages, um, there's a pers persistence layer baked in into Nats, which is called Jetstream. And with Jetstream enabled, you get some more uh, features um, that are um, yeah, um, available for you to use. Um, one thing is streams. If you are familiar with Kafka, you may know streams, um, which is um, kind of like the same, but um, more powerful, in my opinion, in, in Nats. And then also um, really powerful in that context to replace Redis is uh, key value stores. You, you have a key, values, key, key value store baked in into Nats and be able to store some keys with um, values as byte arrays, basically, um, to use that also um, with NATs, which is not common in other uh, messaging systems. And the last thing, which is also really powerful, powerful are object stores. So you are able to um, store bigger files in uh, NATs directly and uh, have some kind of like S3 API-ish um, available for you in the development. And then you can basically store some files related to your application um, without the need to deploy some something else to, for storing files, files, for example. So yeah, that is basically uh, the nuts in a few minutes. So uh, I think f f um, for, for nuts, we could easily talk multiple hours about nuts itself. So uh, I don't... Uh, uh, I cannot cover ev everything about NATS today, but uh, it should uh, be a, a small introduction about the yeah, project. Yeah, it, it was a nice introduction. Yeah, cool. So um, just one quick note about the scalability. Um, I have prepared here a little cluster overview. So in NATS, you are um, easily um, be able to, to um, create clusters. So you have multiple servers running in one data center, for example. And you can also create super clusters. So you have uh, multi-geo deployed uh, NAS clusters that are connected to each other. And um, yeah, so it's it's a really powerful construct that is really, really scalable, as I said. And um, yeah, there's a lot uh, to cover. Um, I would, um, uh, I would uh, uh, say that you uh, visit the Synadia um, YouTube channel where they cover a lot of stuff um, based on based on nuts in general, a lot of tutorials uh, to follow and uh, to dive deeper in the whole topic. Yeah, for the people who are watching us now, I will leave all the links down in the description below so you can check it out by yourself. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and to come uh, to uh, Quase actually. So Quase, as I said, is a um, desktop app for managing those nuts clusters. And uh, the typical um, yeah, way of managing NATS clusters before Quays was actually to use a CLI, CLI tool. So it's called NATS CLI. It's also developed from the team that, uh, is, um, that develops the NATS server. And with the NATS CLI, you have simply a text-based um, interface to connect to your NATS clusters and uh, manage and see the um, cluster content. And uh, that is really a handy tool. And um, Quase um, is not there to replace NAT CLI, but to enhance some scenarios where it makes more sense to use a UI-based tool. And that is why Quase exists. And um, a little overview of the architecture. So um, Quase is, of course, built with Tauri. I use uh, React for the front-end technology. And what's a little bit unusual for Tauri applications, I would say, is that there is a thin layer of Rust um, uh, involved in, in the app itself. It's um, not that much, but um, there's also a feature involved from Tauri, which is called Sidecar. And with Sidecars, you are able to run binaries next to the um, running Tauri app. And that is why that is what I heavily use in, in that case. Um, so it's a Go binary under the hood that's running next to the um, Tauri application itself. And um, it contains the Nets Go library, which is the official client library in Go. Um, that is that gets used to connect to those NATS clusters. So we have a reliable um, communication between the cluster and the client. 
and we are using the libraries that are provided by the um, Nats team, let's say. So yeah, that is the architecture, the the yeah, the, the great picture of the application, let's say. Yeah, and um, to show a little bit about Nats, I would um, I would uh, show the Nats CLI first, so you get a picture how to run Nats uh, itself. So you, you can simply start the Nats server by running the binary, which are already downloaded, of course, and then it's just a comment Nats server. That is all. If you ha have run uh, Kafka uh, before. Uh, then this would need several minutes, but in, in uh, Nats it's really easy because it's just a simple binary and you don't need anything else. So we have a Nats server running that is um, that comes with core Nats uh, functionalities, and now we are able to basically um, use the pub sub publish subscribe pattern, for example, with the Nats CLI for a little little example how Nats works. So I could. Um, I can connect to NATS clusters via the NATS CLI tool, which is simply NATS. And then um, there are some functionalities um, for context. So you are, you are able to switch between clusters via context. Um, and um, when we look out at those contexts, we have a local demo uh, context activated right now, which is the little star here. And that's why when we run some com commands, we are connected to those uh, to this local NAT server in this case. So um, to show a little so example, I would use the pub sub, as I said, and would um, subscribe with NAT sub to a subject. So everything is um, powered by subject in NATS. So um, I would subscribe to the subject uh, product created, and that is now listening to th this uh, subject. And in another window, I would um, create some messages via the C CLI. And I can do that with uh, NATS pub, of course. And we use the subject products uh, product created. And I would simply provide here a product, let's call it iPhone 15. And um, I think that was the wrong context. Let me check. Or, oh, I missed a D simple sp spelling error here so it's called product created and when we publish this message you see that um, the subscriber on the left uh, gets the um, message right away in the in the terminal and we are also able to provide account and let's say we want to publish 100 messages with a sleep of uh, 200 milliseconds in be uh, between those messages and you also see that this is also working. So the NATS CLI is really a powerful tool for, for working with the NATS classes itself, um, but uh, Quase uh, provides some features on top of it. Okay, um, to show the power of, of one NATS server, uh, we can also do a little benchmark here, um, which is also baked in into the NATS CLI. So we're running a benchmark with um, pub, uh, 20 publishers and 20 subscribers. And if we run, run that, it's pretty fast. Um, you see that we um, yeah, um, have stats here. So we published um, 3.8 million messages per second. And um, um, oh, we subscribed um, um, and we um, published uh, 184k messages per second, which is really, really fast for such a system. And yeah, that's that's also baked in, which is really cool. And yeah, I would uh, now switch to, to Quase itself to show a little bit inside the application. All right, so Quase, um, when we open up Quase, um, we are able to connect to NATS clusters um, via the context features I showed earlier by the NATS CLI. And um, we can connect to a local um, cluster I run on my machine. And when we connect, we see a lot of stats uh, regarding the cluster status itself. So we see how many NATS servers are running in that cluster, um, how many connections, 
we see some stats about streams, um, how many million, uh, how many uh, stream messages are stored, and so on. So I get you get a quick overview of your cluster state and um, the workloads that are inside your cluster, which is not so easy with the CLI itself. We have also a server section, so you see all the um, servers that's that running NUTs in the moment. You see also that they all, all also have uh, Jetstream, Jetstream en enabled for all nodes. And we also have a powerful um, graph um, feature. So you see the clusters, uh, which is basically a NAT supercluster in that case. So we have three clusters that are currently running. Um, and you see the connections between um, the, the servers how many connections are established and so on. So it helps you with um, uh, getting a, a clear picture of your cluster state in that case. And you also have much more details about the servers um, if you open up uh, the details of one server, which is um, this view here. So everything you can imagine or what's available inside uh, NAPS for getting um, stats and possible problems um, for servers, you can see here in this view, basically. All right. Um, yeah, then um, we also have um, the, um, yeah, the, the features uh, for, for viewing streams. So we have streams which are basically persistent, um, yeah, persistent messaging, let's say. So if we publish with Cornet a message, there's no guarantee that the message um, um, yeah, gets, gets sent to a receiver. If there's no receiver, the message will simply be deleted. And with streams, you are able to send um, messages to a subject, and those mes messages get stored on the server side. So you, you are able to pr um, process them later on or multiple times how you uh, wish to, to manage, manage those um, messages. And I have some uh, streams prepared already. And what is really powerful is that you see the real-time traffic that's coming in um, via, via Quase. So um, here, for example, we have a little site visit stream where we emulate that there are some visitors on the page, and uh, which, which is really cool that you are able to see the messages. And um, you can also click on those messages and um, see the payload of those messages, messages uh, formatted for you. Um, you can also switch the language, but it also detects the um, payload message automatically. So yeah, it's, it's, it makes the cluster content much more visible. And um, if you develop a application with NATS together, then you can quickly debug your message payloads and messages in general if it fits. and um, yeah, I think that's that's bringing value to the whole system itself. What is also possible is to see the um, the uh, configuration of a stream and maybe a, a little demo uh, regarding the uh, streams. So we could um, quickly open the payment stream. The payment stream uh, currently doesn't have any messages here. Um, and if we look at the configuration of the stream, you see that there are two subjects assigned to a to to this uh, payment stream, and we could um, copy the subject to um, create uh, some mes messages here with the NAT CLI. And uh, I quickly switch back to the um, CLI here and switch the context to use the other NAT system. Um, so I'm switching the context with the context uh, command in NUTCLI and use the 2.10 um, context here. So we can connect to the other cluster in that case. And now um, I will publish to that subject, um, um, which was payment, I think. Yeah, payments. And we can publish some, some messages here. Um, the payload is, is doesn't matter in that case, but we say we publish 100 messages um, with a sleep of, uh, let's say, 200 milliseconds. So now that's running, and hopefully if we switch back to the 
uh, view, we see that the messages are coming in here in real time. So it's basically um, our hello um, payload we are given in the CLI. So these messages get stored. Um, there are multiple options to configure how long these mess messages uh, should get stored. Um, so you can say uh, you want to have it um, like um, um, a max, mess a max stream size. So you, so you could say one gigabyte and everything else gets deleted. Or you could uh, do that by messages count or even by messages a subject um, topic. Or yeah, so there are multiple um, limits you can set um, to configure the retention basically of the streams. And yeah, that is that is one uh, big feature of streams. What uh, wh what I don't want to cover today is um, key value buckets. Um, so with key value buckets, you are able to um, store some key value pairs inside a bucket, and um, you can quickly um, yeah open up um, the the keys or search for keys in the, inside a bucket, and then you are able to. Um, yeah, get a feeling what's what's inside your cluster state at the moment. Yeah, I think that should cover the basic functionality of Quase, I would say. Yeah, it seems like a complete project. There are already so many stuff. I don't know. Are you working <laughs> on this alone or there is a team behind it? And how long did it get you to be in that stage? Yeah, so I'm building that completely on my own. So there's no team behind it. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said in the beginning, so I'm building that in my free time. So I have a full time job as a developer right now. And um, this project took me like, I think, seven months uh, until today to build it. And um, yeah, I, I, I had some, some, multiple iterations, let's say, um, where I completely changed the, the, the architecture and stuff uh, to, to get to a point where it is today. And um, yeah, now um, after releasing the first version 1.0, um, I'm in the status to build a lot of new features. So it's just the beginning, basically. Wow. There's a lot of uh, stuff um, uh, to, to, to build, um, uh, to build uh, right into the tool, such as back, uh, backups and restores and so on for streams. And uh, yeah, there's a lot to cover in, 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 um, in that itself um, from a functionality point of view. So I think uh, th that, that, that development phase will go on for multiple years, I would say. Yeah, but you already, you already have a lot of features. When I was doing the research, I thought that that was uh, a project that was built for more than one person. <laughs> and then, yeah, I I started reading about you and I didn't saw anyone else. And I thought maybe it's only you. But again, I wasn't sure because <laughs> it's a full project. That's why. Yeah. Anyway, you've done an amazing job. And I think that, Thank yeah, you. in the future, we will see even more amazing things from Case. What was your inspiration? How did you start building it? Yeah, I noticed that um, when looking at the yeah, when I looked at the the current state of tools, UI tools in particular for for Nets itself, I noticed that there were some small, let's say, open source projects in in the ecosystem, but um, yeah, it felt like not so ready for prime time use, let's say. So um, I thought, yeah, there could be yeah a, a a sweet spot let's say for for nets itself to provide a a powerful um desktop tool let's say that was always the plan to have a desktop tool um that is that can directly connect to your cluster and um yeah i noticed that there isn't something which covers my needs so i decided to build a uh, quase and uh yeah, it moved on for several months now. It's uh, I found a company for it and so on, which is also an, a lot of work in the end. So um, yeah, exciting times, definitely. Yeah, because right now you have to be both a developer and the entrepreneur behind the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, is, which, which makes it not uh, easier, let's say. Yeah, <laughs> For sure. 
So let's change gears for a bit. And you mentioned that you used um, not so much Rust, but more Tyree and Go. But when you were developing it, and you're still developing it, when you had bugs or challenges, how did you recover from them? Yeah, on the Rust side, um, which is currently a few hundred lines of code, so not that much on the Rust side, I would say. Um, but um, I noticed that it wasn't that easy to to get the Rust errors resolved. So logging and stuff wasn't that easy in, in Tori, and um, that was definitely a pain point. Um, so uh, yeah, I noticed that there are some logging libraries, but in the end, it was not so easy to get started with the, the whole setup. And um, yeah, that was definitely a little bit hard um, from the beginning. But um, yeah, that was definitely a point which took some time to get it uh, to get it right, let's say. Yeah, I'm also quite new to Rust. I haven't built anything in production and I can feel that pain point. Yeah. But here at Crab Nebula, we also have the dev tools. I don't know if you know that or if you had the chance to take a look in it. And if so, what is your opinion about it? Yeah, so so I checked uh, the, the dev tools out and thought, yeah, it's it's kind of like the same as as Quays for Nets. Uh, so so the dev tools are something to look inside your application, but not Nets, but uh, in that case, Tori. So, it has some similarities, I would say, but um, I think that could be really, really valuable because I have some IPC calls and those IPC calls, for example, um, yeah, um, wasn't weren't that easy in, in error scenarios. And I thought, yeah, these this dev tools um, can, can help me in that situation because you have a really nice IPC uh, lock and know what's going on inside the Tauri stack. So. I think that could be valuable, definitely. Yeah, exactly. And for the folks that are watching us right now, uh, DevTools is a free tool that you can experiment. Uh, right now it has some basic features, but our team is working on it. And I will leave again, as I said earlier in the description, all the links so you can check it out by yourself. All right, and as we are closing this video, do you have any future plans? Maybe for Case, you already mentioned a few things, but in general, are you building any other projects, which I will say probably not because you are working full time and you have Case. But yeah, do you have any, any plans for the future? Yeah, I mean, there are some big features I'm working on that I cannot share today because in the end, they are so big that they could potentially be uh, applications by itself. So definitely check out the, the Quase website, Quase.app, um, for, for more information in, in the future. Uh, check out Quase maybe or get started with Nets. So definitely check out uh, Nets itself uh, for, for messaging type of applications you are building. Um, it's it's worth the time to to invest to check out uh, nets, and yeah, I'm I'm ready for building big features in in the next coming months. I would say that's amazing. And um, at the time that we're recording this, you also mentioned that there is a 14 days free trial, right? Yes, so it's completely free. You can use it on one machine as you'd like. It's available for Linux, Windows, and um, uh, Mac, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, and try it out. Uh, let the uh, run run nuts on your local machine. It's really easy, as you as I've shown. It's it's just one comment in the CLI, and then you're ready to go to uh, test a little bit with nuts. All right, Sebastian. Thank you very much. Do you have any final thoughts for us, or anything else you would like to share with our audience? No, um, just uh, thanks. Uh, great. Thanks for, for having me and uh, yeah, enjoyed the interview. Thank you. It was my pleasure. And I personally learned a lot of new stuff. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. And thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more awesome videos with amazing Tyree creators.